Okay folks, here we go again. So, particle physics questions, there's some uh, nice ones here, but also some quite tricky ones. Uh, so, here's the first one. So we've got uranium-236, and it decays into lead-204. And then the first um, sneaky trick here is, if you read this question you think it's just alpha decays, then you might look at the bottom line and think that that number's gone down by 10, so you need five of these. But there are also beta decays. So although the, the bottom number, the um, baryon number, is going down by two, it's also going up by one sometimes. So the easiest way to do this question is just to think about the top line, and then it doesn't matter how many beta decays there are. The top number's got to go down by 32, which means you need eight of these to make the 32. Uh, they could have made that question a bit harder by making you realize that that means this number has gone down by 16, which means if it's only going to actually go down by 10, it needs to also go up by six. So you need six of those. But they haven't asked you that, they've just asked you for this number. So there are eight alpha decays. Uh, this is a straight recall question, but it's um, something you've got to be clear about. The, a hadron feels the weak and the strong force, but a lepton only feels the weak force. So it's laid out in a slightly strange way. A hadron does feel the strong force, does feel the weak force. So that answer is correct. If you look at the other questions, leptons don't feel the strong one. Hadrons do feel the weak one, leptons don't feel the strong one, but do feel the weak one. So that one's doubly wrong, uh, but the top one is the correct answer, A. Okay, again, question three, a little bit of recall. There's a sort of hard bit of recall, a easy bit of recall in this, a fit of hope. So what you need to know is that strangeness is not conserved in the weak interaction so that's the bit that i'm hoping everyone remembers um, but the tricky bit is um, you might be tempted to go for weak and weak here uh, but when you produce strange particles they're always produced in pairs by the strong interaction it's only when one strange particle decays that strangeness is not conserved so they're actually produced in the strong interaction but decay through the weak interaction. So that's A, but I sort of forgive you if you've written D, because uh, that's a bit of a slightly more obscure recall. Okay, question four. So the nucleus of uh, nickel 65 decays, a beta particle, an electron antineutrino. The formatting hasn't helped you here. This is one thing, an electron antineutrino um, are emitted. How many protons and neutrons are there in the resulting daughter nucleus? So the best thing here is to write the equation 65 nickel 28 decays into something plus a beta particle plus the antineutrino. That means that this number is 65 and this number is 29. And it doesn't matter what the element is, but we know it's got 29 protons and 65 minus 29 is 36 neutrons. Okay, question five. An ideal nucleus decays into a nucleus of xenon-131, a beta minus particle and particle y. Which is the property of particle y? So this is the ones where I think you just have to read the answers. So there's a lepton number of plus one. Well, this is um, it's such a common and easy mistake to make here. This is a beta particle. A beta particle is an electron. An electron has a lepton number of plus one. Okay, I know there's a minus one there. I know it's negative, but it's not an antiparticle. So this is plus one. So the lepton number of this is minus one. So not a. It's an antiparticle. Okay, so this is a this is a particle. And a lepton. This must be an antilepton. So this one is correct. 
again depending on time in the exam you might think oh, I need to move on I've got that answer right but you might want to check the other ones if you want to be more certain so it's negatively charged well this is negative so this must be positive the experience is a strong interaction no it's a lepton or an anti-lepton so it doesn't experience a strong interaction so B is the correct answer okay question six uh, again, quite a lot to think about in question six. We've got a meson, a pi plus meson and a neutron. They're interacting to make a baryon, uh, a sigma zero baryon plus this other particle X. We've got to work out the quarks in X. Um, key piece of information here is this is produced through the strong interaction. So strangeness must be conserved. So, it's told us. Um, sorry, it's told us that the that this is a UDS. So, if strangeness is going to be conserved. Neither of these particles have got strange quarks. We could write out the quarks if you like. Uh, uh, this is up, anti down. This is up, down, down. So this is the only strange quark so far, so this must have an anti-strange quark. Okay, so it's not one of these two. That leaves us with these two, but this is not a baryon baryon. So if we did baryon number conservation, zero plus one turns into one plus. So it's not a baryon, so it's not this one, which means the answer must be A. Okay, question seven. Which of the following statements about muons is incorrect? Okay, a muon is a lepton, that's definitely true. So, uh, it's sometimes people get confused between muons, sounds a bit like a pi and a kaon, but remember they're in a different class of particle. Um, a muon has a greater mass than an electron, that's definitely true. Um, then we get down to the de Broglie wavelength. So, if a muon and electron each have the same uh, de Broglie wavelength, each have the same momentum, we'll remember the equation is lambda equals h over p so if they've got the same p h obviously is a constant the Planck constant so they have the same wavelength so that one's true so a muon with the same momentum as an electron has a larger kinetic energy well a muon has roughly uh, a 200th of the mass 207th of the mass of a of an electron so the muon has got that much mass so to have the same momentum, it must have 200 times the velocity. But of course, the kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So if, you, if you've got 200 squared on the top, if you like, and 200 on the bottom, it will have 200 times the kinetic energy to have the same momentum. Okay, question eight. Which statement concerning the forces between particles is incorrect? So leptons experience the weak interaction, that's true. Leptons experience a strong interaction, that is incorrect. Hadrons experience the weak interaction, that's true. Hadrons experience a strong interaction, that's true. That's the definition of a hadron. So that's a nice easy way around of asking the question that they asked in a slightly more complicated way earlier. Okay, question nine. Which of the following nuclei has the smallest specific charge? So specific charge is the charge divided by the mass. You haven't got to go through all the um, complications of working out the actual numbers here because if I did the charge of this one, for example, this is a nucleus. So the, there's one proton, so it's one on the top and the mass number is one, so it's one on the bottom. We could write times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 but that number is going to be the same every time. So all that matters is the bottom number, the charge, divided by the top number, the mass, and we're looking for the smallest. So we've got 6 over 12, 6 over 14, and 92 over 235. This one is the smallest. So the answer to question 9 is D. Okay, question 10. Again, a nice straightforward recall question. This is just a fact you've got to learn. So if I'm going to start from the bottom, so beta minus decay is the weak nuclear force, so that um, does give the correct exchange particle strong interaction, pion, 
uh, in the electrostatic force, the virtual photon, but gravitational attraction is not the W boson. So A is the correct answer. Okay, this one, quite a lot going on here, just put it on the screen. So the partially completed diagram represents electron capture. So start yourself off, remember electron capture is how a proton turns into a neutron uh, by capturing an electron and it's also going to produce to conserve um, lepton number a neutrino uh, but most of that information is already there for you so we need to go to the quarks so a proton is up up down a neutron is up down down so this is an up quark turning into a down quark um, so down up up turns into down up down so that means it's not this one or uh, this one so we're down to B or D then we've got to look at the exchange particle this is a charge of plus two thirds turns into the down which is minus one third by emitting this particle and the conservation of charge here means this must be a positive a W plus equally you can do it over here a negative particle turns into a neutral particle a neutral particle so this must be a W plus across here so the answer is B okay number 12 so which diagram represents the process of uh, a beta plus decay? So again, remember beta plus decay, this is a proton turning into a neutron, a beta plus, and uh, to conserve lepton number and neutrino. Uh, so if we talk about quarks, this is up, up, down, up, down, down. So it's an up into a down. So we're starting with an up, so it's not C and it's not D. Then we're after kind of spot the difference here. So everything's the same in these, apart from this little bar here, which tells you this is an anti-electron um, neutrino. But remember this again. This catches people out because there's no bar above this particle. But remember this is an antiparticle. A beta plus a positron is an antiparticle. So um, to conserve lepton number if you're going to make a lepton uh, sorry an anti-lepton you've got to make a lepton so a is the correct answer great question 13 we have actually got to do the maths this time to work out specific charge so an atom of uh, nitrogen 16 gains three electrons so it starts off as an atom and it gains three electrons so this is now an n3 minus ion so the charge is 3 lots of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. The mass is 16. You don't have to go through the electrons. This is going to make a difference in like the fourth significant figure or something. So 16 times 1.66 times 10 to the uh, minus 27 is good enough for us. Uh, and that gives you uh, 1.8 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram but of being naughty this is 3 minus so it's minus here so the answer is b question 14 very similar question uh, except this time they've only asked for the magnitude so the addition of a single electron means we've got an f1 minus ion so we've now got 1 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by uh, 19 times 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 uh, and that comes to 5 times 10 to the 6 coulombs per kilogram again this because they've added electron it's f minus this is a minus but because they've asked you for the magnitude of specific charge that they don't mind that we've ignored the minus sign. Okay, and the last one, uh, decay of a neutral K on K0 is given by the equation. 
what are x and y well you might you know always prefer you if you can to try and work out the answer and then look for it but sometimes you just have to look through the possibilities um, unless you've managed to somehow learn this in a kind of Beth Gilby way so k0 x plus y and an antineutrino so um, we've got three particles on the right we've got no leptons on the left so these can't all be leptons because we're going to end up with a lepton number whatever combination we do so if we have an e plus and an e minus for example we've got an anti-lepton a lepton and an anti-lepton so that can't be right uh, same here anti-lepton a lepton and an anti-lepton can't be right uh, so that leaves us with c or d and c and d we've got a meson and a lepton so now we're out, we've got a chance uh, if we try c if this is a pi plus an electron and then we've got the antineutrino this is the charge works out because it's zero charge and zero charge and the lepton number works out because we've got a lepton and an antilepton if we had the e plus d is e plus and um, electron neutrino and a pi minus the charge works but the lepton number doesn't so the answer is c okay well done there's as hopefully you there's some fairly straightforward ones on there that are recall that you should be able to do but there are a few tricky ones to catch you out as well so well done if you've got a good mark on that